Now this is not a huge lake. About 150 acres. We're managing it for panfish. There are red air in here, there are bluegill in here. Tell me what's going on out here. Well, right now we're, we're seeing that there's a, a crowded bass population, um, probably uh, more so crowded than we want it to be. We're managing it for panfish. We are managing it for bluegill, so you do want it a little crowded, but uh, over the past couple of years, we've seen it uh, uh, go a little bit too far. The growth rates have uh, significantly dropped off. Uh, you know, we, we've aged a few 12-inch bass up to eight to 11 years old. Now Jeff, that's significant because, you know, in, in a, when bass are doing well, you know, uh, an eight to 10 year old bass should weigh what? Well, an eight, eight to 10 year old bass should be around 20 inches, weighing anywhere from four to six pounds uh, is for, for a fish that, that old. You really want a 12 inch fish to be around uh, three to four years. Four years, you know, we can, you know, we, it's fine, it's acceptable. Uh, but, uh, you know, when you start hitting, you know, greater than five years at 12 inches, that, that's really not acceptable. Got and, and we, got, we got some crowding issues. A fisheries needed a way to figure out how to get these fish out of the lake without harming them. These boats have an electric charge that goes out into the water. There's a box in the back that controls the current through a generator, through the box, out through the antenna that reached down into the water that gives just enough of a jolt not to kill the fish but to shock the fish. He's put into the live well where he recovers very quickly. We need to remove about a thousand fish uh, and that, that's going to be mainly fish that are nine to 13 inches and uh, Mainly, most of them are in that 11 inch size and that's the main bulk of those fish that we want to remove. Basically, shocking boats come out mm -hmm. in force and they will shock them, put them in a live well. Right. They'll measure them by inch groups. They'll be transferred into a boat like this. Right. Then the fish will be taken from here to the fish truck, right. which will take them where? They'll be taken to, uh, to Giss Creek Lake and Bolts Lake. 13, seven. We've always said, you know, not to move fish. And there, there are reasons why not to move fish because, you know, about moving different uh, issues. You know, some of the things we've looked into for here and, and uh, we're not gonna move anything to, to either of those lakes that, that isn't already there. You know, some of the things that we worry about. Everybody wants to come to Kentucky to fish because we are blessed with great resources and guys like you who are out to do the best they can to, to, to make every lake in your district the best fishing it can possibly be. You bring people in to ask their opinions, and, and uh, you got some pretty good response from the I've local got, meeting. One, we've got some really good biologists that I'm able to go and talk to, and then you know we went to the public and to get their opinions on it. And uh, you know, I was very pleased that you know that we got a lot of positive responses. So you had a meeting with folks from around this area, and what was discussed in that yeah, meeting? Yeah, we had a public uh, meeting uh, back about a month ago to, to discuss uh, the, the potential of doing this mass removal today and just trying to get their input, their opinions on, you know, if that would be an acceptable uh, method. And we're trying to, the reason we did the removals, we're trying to be a little bit more active in our management. Uh, we can make a quicker impact to this fish population by going and physically removing them than to put a, a size limit on it. You know, that takes a little bit of time to go through the, break, you know, the regulatory process and uh, then having people start harvesting the fish. You know, that's, that may be two years down the road before we start seeing impacts to the population from that. This, we can come out in a day or two and uh, remove the, uh, the fish that we, you know, we've decided that we need to remove to, to get back toward the population we want to see and, uh, and see a much quicker response. We're hoping to see a response by this fall uh, that we start, you know, that some of these fish can pick up maybe, you know, one to two inches that uh, they haven't been picking up due, due to the crowding here. About three quarters of them will go to Gist, a quarter of them will go to Bolts because Bolts is a much smaller lake. And we're gonna stock these at around two fish per acre is how many fish will be going into Gist. Gist Creek uh, currently has kind of come off a really big high. I mean, the fishing was really good for a couple of years. We had some really good year classes. 
of uh, good spawns over there. Uh, and then over the last couple of years, it's kind of fought, those spawns have kind of fallen off, so our population has dropped a little bit. So uh, this is one of the lakes that we've chosen that would probably be, would be very beneficial. Because your goal is the same as the fishermen. You want to come out here and catch good fish. You want people to have a good experience that come to a department managed lake. That's right. We, we're trying. We're out there trying to to manage these fisheries, you know, to the best of our abilities, and to have where people can go out and have just a, a really, uh, you know, nice afternoon, catch a few fish, and, and maybe even have some to take home if that's what they want to do. Well, it's a very interesting concept. We'll, we'll follow this up. We'll follow up with you and, and talk about some things and. And uh, I think I think uh, Central District is I think the whole state's in good hands, and we thank you very much for working hard and thinking about these things and sorting them out. That's the last one of the bunch.